I can't even remember. Are you on um, Are you on um, Spotify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry? Are you playing on Spotify? And uh, no, um, YouTube. Yeah, okay. Well, I got the link to the second one. So, I would expand it. I can't even. So, let me let me send to you, Paul, and you, you can just share. Yeah, we continue from where we ended. Issues, so this will just be part two, a continuation of what we're discussing. I think she, oh, yeah. she, yeah, she, oh, she released a song 48 minutes ago. Yeah, so we're like, did you get the link? Oh, should I send to you? Yes. Okay, let me send to you. Yeah, there's a link. I just um, turned to part two. So, yeah. Got it? Let me know when you, you're done and we can continue. Sorry? Um, uh, what's up? I sent it to you on WhatsApp. not the start because this thing i'm playing this song and it stops you got it yeah when you're ready let me know and yeah. we can pick up Okay. I think that we could do uh, uh, presentations for current things. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, from yeah. from the from the concerns that you pointed out, well, if we get to see how like the cryptocurrencies or the crypto networks fit into it and they solve those, then you would see the solution to those other things. So, so I mean, just to to continue from from where we ended the last time, uh, this Web 1.0 companies like Google they put out these solutions to us, but they have to make money. Uh, although originally they started free, and that's what you as a founder you have faced that many times with so the freemium model. Um, how do you start generating income? So the value you are giving them is way more than what they're giving you and the, google has all these data centers so they start selling people's data so from that uh you you would have these networks that give you value 
they can find ways for you to either bring existing value and use on their networks, that's by uh, computerizing the current systems or whatever they do, but they are first. That's why now you have Google Pay and other things. And most of the concerns you mentioned are actually solutions that these people can implement. But those solutions are not primitive enough. They are like uh, high-level things that can be built on top of the current systems, you see. So now, um, with that kind of internet, there are many problems. The, and those are the problems now that we can look at the problems that like Bitcoin and the rest address. The first one is centralization. If there is one, the, you can look at countries too. If there is like a president that does all the cabinet appointments and you, you, you know we may be talking about, there are so many of them, especially in Africa. If there's the one president that appoints everything, says you do this, you do that, the whole country depends on the person's mood, by the way. They can all you start having other um, um, corruption issues, uh, like uh, how do you call this thing? Uh, tribalism and all of those. So, from a centralized system, that's one problem. Uh, the central system can change the goalpost at any time, and the people will suffer. You see, and then another system is it, the honeypot problem. Once you have a centralized system. If you attack that system, the system is down. And that has happened many times. Uh, Google has been down. The times when Facebook is down, like you go to Facebook, you see an error. And even at work, the times when our systems are down, Microsoft Cloud, they have to send an email. Yeah. So now you see all these problems with these centralized systems. But the other thing is that from the honeypot problem, where you have a central system that people can attack, it means that your system may not be, be safe. I've been here since I came to the United States. There are times when I receive letters that this uh, this site, maybe a shop that you've been shopping, that they have your information, their servers were breached. So there, there is a high probability that uh, your, your, maybe your social security has been exposed. And there's identity theft where people can take your social security number, go take loans and buy houses, and then you see that there's this whole debt that you're owing you don't know where it came from because like scammers and hackers have taken your your, your identity right mm -hmm. so that, those are problems that these centralized systems have so now uh the, the question is how do we solve it that's where decentralization comes because even in decentralized systems they use decentralization google has servers in terms of implementation, they have decentralized system. Google has servers everywhere, and due to sharding, they replicate your information. So if one data center goes down, it can pick up data from other data centers. So it does that, but it's the same entity called Google. So they can as well edit those records. There are times when, the, the, I think there were times when people even sued Google for listening to people's conversations. Like there are people that read your emails so they can decide what, so that is not good, you see. So this central, the same way that if you have a government that is very centralized, they can start solving and they can start all this corruption. They can start changing records, changing the system, changing the law. But law is not supposed to be changed. So that's the fundamental problem with centralized systems. So all the value creation that you mentioned, they, they are really good. You can put them on top of Facebook. But what is stopping Facebook or Zuckerberg from crediting himself with most of the value in the system nothing will yeah. stop him and that's what dictators do you see yeah. so now when you look at that now let's be, be let's look at the facts like from from history uh in in the te in terms of currency greece for example had an issue where their their currency was devalued or let's look at the definition of money if you look at money in uh, um, economics but the, the money has certain properties. It has to be scarce, right? It has to be scarce. It has to um, um, be a store of value and be a unit of accountability. And then it has other things like uh, an expression of optionality. When you have money, those that have enough money can buy jet planes. They have so many options, jet planes, ships, and stuff. So, my, But money has to be 
difficult to reproduce. So that's what will give it its value. It has to be portable. You can move it around, durable. That's why we have all these coins and things like that, right? But And then in terms of store value and accountability, the only reason why you would save money is because you know that it will be more useful later. When you have savings, you are probably working and saving for your future. But now, due to inflation, which is caused by several government policies and uh, economic policies that are implemented, people start losing value. You have countries, look at their parents. You have countries where people work and they are promised a pension, but the, the government prints so much money that the value uh-huh. reduces. So, like, as we're grown up, you always hear parents say that I used to pay for my house 100 francs. Or <laughs> I used to, like, do this 250. And you're like, what, today I pay 100,000, 100, that's because of inflation, right? So, yeah. so now you start seeing the fundamental problem that we're facing. Where you have these centralized systems, there are people that have the print button. And they can mm-hmm. print money at any time. So, so that's what Satoshi mm-hmm. also and Nakamoto wanted to solve. They wanted to avoid that um, problem where the, the, you have a central system and they call it a trust, trust based system. So that's why net, uh, cryptocurrencies always come to replace trust systems because we uh, are used mm-hmm. to systems where we give them a trust, be it Google, be it Facebook. Then you start seeing them dancing around with all these policies that they're making, right? So, uh, yeah, so see like in, in, uh, let's, let's take a USSR. Uh, uh, there are many Jews. I'll take Jews. For example, there are many Jews that were bankers. They had money. They, 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 they built a whole life. And then the country starts going down. Now you want to travel out and come to America, um, mm-hmm. per se. And first there's a restriction. Just like now in Cameroon, I don't think you can go to the bank and withdraw like a hundred million francs CFA, or you can't even send that money to to Nigeria or to some other country. They probably think you want to fund some kind of terrorism thing, right? So, but that, should that happen? The question is, should you be able to create all this value that amounts to hundreds of millions, and then for you to go and take it, and they tell you that you can't? You see what I mean? So the, we need a system where there is borderless payments, there, there is a, 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 a integrity. People cannot just change the goalpost at any time. And then money would really be money in the sense that accountability and, and things like that. So when you look at those fundamental properties, you now see that all what you explained about Facebook and the value you can create, that can happen. But they can always abuse it. So if you don't have any central location, yes. nobody can, 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 can abuse it. So Bitcoin now, at the core mm-hmm. of it, it's saying that, okay, we don't have any central location. Let's assume mm-hmm. that we are in Njangi house where instead of one person keeping the records of Njangi, which is that ledger that you spoke of, everybody mm-hmm. keeps the record, yes. right? So whenever anybody makes a payment, everybody knows that, um, this person made a payment so we can record it. You see what I mean? So now, uh, uh, now if just one person keeps the record, they can change it. If we say, okay, let's keep two people, the two most trusted people, they can see connive, we can bribe them. We don't know what, what you can do to tell somebody to change their minds. But yeah, if everybody also keeps the record, people can form clicks where, yeah. let, let's say, I send money to you. Right, I pay my monthly in Jangi, but then I connive with three other people, let's say majority, and the majority will like also update the books in a way that they get to gain. So you yes. see that even in such a system where everybody keeps the record, some people can form clicks. Yes. You see, so how do you prevent that? So at the end mm-hmm. of the day, Bitcoin is a network, it's like a Jangi house where instead of one person keeping the ledger, the records of who has paid, who has made transactions, account balances, everybody keeps the record. And then when you make a payment, a payment is just like a transaction. Or like I send this text message to Paul, I send you two Bitcoin. When I send you two Bitcoin, I'm telling everybody that I have sent Paul two Bitcoin, so Paul will record it. But if we do that, 
it does not really is too simplistic how mm-hmm. is the value really captured you see so now once you have a network or how do you what's the incentive what's the motivation for people to participate in that network so in order mm-hmm. for people to participate and to for money to really have value there has to be some economic incentive so for yes. bitcoin now what happens is that since it's a ledger right and people can add these transactions it takes those transactions and packs them into blocks so it's not like every transaction that somebody says uh, oh i sent Paul 200 francs right mm-hmm. and then you just have to write it no it it takes a couple of them and forms like a block so if it's a ledger i remember when we were in school you could have a ledger that has several sections like history geography like it's a couple of pages you you could look at how they sew they sew them together you would have like a bunch of pages that will form almost like one section then you see another bunch of pages right so imagine that um bitcoin now decides that okay uh all these transactions that are announced in the this jangi house would take a couple of them and form a block or a folder so if you look at the transaction as one page you can put it in a folder and once i have enough to make one folder i sign it but mm-hmm. in order to make it authentic there that's where that puzzle comes in because remember what said that spoken about proof of work where those generals when they're sending messages the same way that you have to know that tata thomas ran to the mountain he should be there should be some proof of work he cannot just come out and looking all clean and fresh and then you say that he, he reached the mountain so there should be some proof of work whenever you want to add blocks to the system so the way that works is they give you a number it's called the nonce right so there's a number that you have to look for a number that is less than that number there's a very big number so you have to hash other numbers that give you a result that is less than the nonce so it's like a sudoku puzzle or whatever puzzle so now you wish to add that block to the system your job will be to generate these numbers hash them check if it's the same as that one or less than that one so the f- everybody in the system will do that the first person to get the correct answer would take the system will tell you is correct would take those transactions put them in the file and then add to the blockchain so you remember linked list so when it's adding to the blockchain it will add a link to the previous block the previous block is linked to the previous block so you have this linked list of blocks so now once you do that addition to the blockchain the system rewards you with a, a, a couple of bitcoins you see so now uh, uh, that reward that's how new bitcoins are made so so you see that anybody in the everyone participating in the net, on the network has an equal opportunity to make money and that's where probabilistic systems come in because the way it chooses you is actually due to probability but also due to your computing power because you need a lot of power to do those hashes to hash that number the same way that Tata Thomas would need a lot of power to run to the summit and to come back you see so now once you have done that hash you pack it the rest of the network the first person that does it the system rewards him so now the system will broadcast to people that hey Paul solved this problem Paul has added a new block and now all of us will now download the new block that you have added in the same way that we will download things on uTorrent or um, BitTorrent so we will get the new ledger right mm-hmm. and and now that's how new bitcoins are made so from there uh, in the normal system since anyone can do that at a given time if 50% of the, of all those participating are honest people that do that the the network is secured Now imagine that you want to change a record. Ha- the way hashing works is if I put Paul and I hash it, it gives me a hash. If I change any letter there, it changes the hash. And that's why most times when you download software, they give you the uh, MDA. You remember you remember that the uh, how do you call that thing for you to check whether the package has, is corrupt. They hash the package and then give you you download it and then there's a hash of that package so when you download the package and you hash it it's not the same as the original hash you know it's been corrupted right so that's where cryptography comes in so all the blocks are hashed and then that new block that you're adding to the system you hash 
the transactions that are there, then you take the a hash of that block, add the hash to the previous block, and then add the whole block to the system. So if you change anything there, the hashes become wrong. So that's how people on the network know that this is not correct. So that's why Bitcoin is very secure because of all those hashing. But the most important part is that since it's distributed, all of us have a copy of the ledger and we're downloading the most recent ledger, which the system again makes sure that it's authentic. If I want to change a record, I will need to jump into everybody's computer and change it. But remember the amount of energy that you used in the first place. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Remember the amount of energy you used in the first place to create that block, right? To solve that puzzle. It means yeah. if I change the previous block, the next block becomes corrupt. I'm corrupting that block. So which means I change it. I have to jump into your computer and change it. And then I have to jump into the other person's computer and change it. So I have a whole network. The more people are joining the network, the more secure it is. And the more blocks are added to the system, the more it's difficult for you to hack it because if you change any block, you have to travel through all the blocks down to 2009 when Bitcoin, or whenever Bitcoin started and change all of them. And, and just for you to change one, you need a lot of energy. So if, if you got that, then, then, then that's the essence of it. That maintains the security. You see that it's very decentralized and then the security is like ensured from the ground up and the system is always... From when Bitcoin started, it's uptime is more than Google, Amazon, all of them because it's never been down. Yeah. So good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. Now um, let's look at the costs of um, the energy costs. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Cost, mm -hmm. cost on processing power. Yeah. Uh, and the opportunity cost of these resources. Yes. Um, in exchange for trust so yeah. because what i see is um the the the, the value of this mm -hmm. is based on the fact that yeah. human cannot be trusted yes exactly exactly so but math the math has always been trusted unity is always unity like one is always one however you want to express the idea of unity so mathematics can be trusted but humans cannot be trusted so that's why and it's not like that's made up. It's not a hypothesis, right? Mm -hmm. It's something yeah, that I'm, you I'm can prove throughout that. history. No, I'm looking at, I'm looking at um, uh, like the base of it all. Mm -hmm. the, the problem that mm -hmm. all of this is trying to solve yes. is that humans have demonstrated in the past that they cannot be trusted. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, so now you, you mentioned the value and the opportunity cost and the energy cost, right? So you yes. hear it, it expends a lot of energy because that's what gives it value. When, mm -hmm. when, when, people, uh, when, when people make money, right, mm -hmm. or gold, why does gold have value? Because gold is rare. Mm -hmm. And how much energy is expended to, to harvest gold? To mine gold, yes, how much energy? A lot, a lot of energy. A lot exactly. Of, uh, to mine and to purify. Exactly. So yes. So mm -hmm. in 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 technical terms, actually, right? The whole mm -hmm. process I described to you, how like the new bitcoins are made, is called consensus because money itself is consensus. It's agreement. Money only has value because we have agreed that. It has that value. One dollar is one. Before money used to be backed by gold, but I think, and that's where the name fiat came about, because fiat is like a man. It means let it be. You see, so money is fiat in the sense that let it be that one dollar is one dollar. So it's backed by nothing. You see what I mean? So, but before it used to be backed by gold because gold is rare and a lot of energy is expended to make gold. So that's what gives it that value. But so now Bitcoin gets its value from the amount of electricity that is expended to create it. And that does not only give it value, it also makes it secure because in order for you to cheat, you need to expend greater than or equal to, especially exponentially, the amount of energy that was used to originally create it. So sometimes people create propaganda and they say that it consumes a lot of energy to do 
the oh. yeah and that process of you adding those transactions to the network is called mining because when you do that bitcoin rewards you so and that's how new bitcoins are made so so the way i used to look at it too is like a banking system that is decentralized where there are different branches so you who is coming to mine in bitcoin you're like a branch you're like a branch right and it's a good business that people can do where people, yes people but now the opportunity cost is the opportunity cost is very high yeah. yes yeah. yeah so the opportunity cost is very high so people will prefer to do something else with, with that money than to 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 get into the yeah. business yeah. Yes. yeah yeah so now this takes the next point yeah the, the what is the opportunity cost of mm. it yeah and how fair mm. is the cost as the opportunity cost keeps increasing well in a world where we're talking about integrity and and uh, uh, security and and accumulation of value compound interest and we really want to capture the 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 value of money then i think the opportunity cost is not much because i'm not losing much by participating in in a uh, uh, in the bitcoin network So take for example there was an article i read the other day that bitcoin miners are making about 3 million uh, a day right so so that's because let's just look at the process that's because uh in july june july when there was the halving process that you rewarded 6.5 they had bit of the bitcoin network is like 10 10 minutes so uh, yeah, yeah. the opportunity cost for an individual i mean uh, like um For example, uh-huh. the, if you run a brothel, mm-hmm. if you run a brothel, mm-hmm. uh, the, opportunity, the opportunity cost to you like is like who's talking about opportunity cost to you because you are making money for all the girls in your brothel, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But now I'm looking at the the community, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, um, those girls in the brothel could be doing some other things that are more uh, a high value. Yeah. I mean, like than just than just selling their bodies for. For, say, uh, for yeah, money, right. yeah. yeah. So uh, there is, there is, um, uh, the, 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 you, you spend money, you spend resources to run your brothel and yeah. you make a profit, on it, right? Yeah. But the community has an opportunity cost yeah. for you running that brothel or maybe some ethical part. Yeah, right. Some, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Allergy, yeah. I, I was gonna add it. Yeah. So that's what I'm as I was the opportunity cost. Yes, of, yes. Of, so now yeah. a lot of people will argue the main thing people argue about is where well, there are many things I, and I'll tell you but all of them uh, some of them are like propaganda and the things that when you look at them detailedly you you really as a thinking adult you know what to do. One of them is the electricity mm-hmm. problem. But how how much electricity do you think a Google's and data center is expand, expanding? Uh, to distribute information in the world like it, it, like, let, let me explain a bit of what they do. You have the computers that you have to power the server racks, the server farms are very big like factories, right? It co- many of them and then it generates a lot of heat. And then they have to cool those computers. So they have to use electricity not only to power the computers, but to also channel the water and the cooling system. And then they have to look for another way to support the yeah, cooling well, system. I get, I get that. I get yeah. that. But I'm looking at the fact that they are distributing information in the world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're getting to that. I just want to show you that the argument that people always make for electricity is not like uh if you look at it detailedly and you look at uh, all the points you see that it's not different because they, they I, i mean in in dc man like i i i used to work in dc there are big buildings that have lights you see new york you see lights that are of las vegas you see these buildings that are expanding lights they they're spending all this electricity so this network that is spend that electricity is not different from other systems that create value But I mean, like, I'll argue for Google because, yeah. like, like organizing information for the world. I mean, like, without without Google graduating from the from the, from the university, would have been like really difficult. We have to rebuild. We have to read real books, not Wikipedia. Okay. Like, 
Okay, in that case, then let's look at the features of Bitcoin, and because we we looked at like how we we just you and I are technical, so we looked at it from a technical point of view how it's put together. I'm I'm, I'm looking at the value it's creating, and you and see it through its features. For example, mm -hmm. um, the reason yeah. why Bitcoin exists is because humans cannot be trusted. That's one reason, and that's what I'm saying that when you look at the value, right, that it adds in the same way that Google adds value by organizing the world's information people will not graduate but if not of google or if you're working today what will you do without google so from that value you see a lot of what, what it adds so that's what i'm saying it's by looking at the features of google so let's look at some of the features of bitcoin right okay now security we have looked at security and then yes. we have also looked at integrity and the the trust aspect that you have a trustless um, situation okay now let's go back to greece and let's go back to russia let's go back to cameroon let's go back to rwanda let's go back to uh, uh, germany all these countries that have had inflation that the central banks are keep pumping money into the system and money there's actually a lot of inflation right so money ends up losing its value you see but what is more important is that there are people that spend their lifetime working and then they want to leave this country that is crumbling the government first of all ends the, the fact they say they first of all put a ban on on the, the banks that's where it always starts you cannot withdraw more than one million so imagine you're in cameroon you have a hundred million in your bank account things are getting rough you want to leave uh, cameroon and go to america okay you have to leave and go to america and and then you cannot withdraw that money so with Bitcoin, what happens now is with wallets, you have a seed phrase. Let's say I have a keyword that says, uh, okay, uh, this is my keyword, right? So I have a Bitcoin wallet. I put, this is my keyword. That, that, that still goes to, the, to um, uh, a human cost problem, which is mm -hmm. um, governments and institutions impose themselves. Yes, on but, the but you see how it, it, it comes into play. So I have now this seed keyword that I say, this is my keyword, right? I put in my wallet and I, I use it, it encrypts my wallet. So if I'm leaving, if anything is happening or to summarize it, it's like you become your own central bank. The other day, um, Beseka had posted that uh, Bitcoin wallets are becoming full-blown banks. So I came and told him that it's always been and it's always be. Then I remember that, oh, I, I wasn't like um, uh, funny enough. So I said that, I sorry, I meant central bank. So, so, so now uh, you see that not only do you have a bank a central bank as a wallet because you can participate and make those um, money like we discussed if you have that keyword that encrypts it i can leave cameroon and throw my phone flush it and come to america and get a, a phone download the app and put the key the seed where this is my keyword it will generate all my assets you see what i mean so I don't know if you see, it's very subtle. You see, the, the feature there is very subtle. So it's, it's super powerful, but to me, like that's just Dropbox for cash, right? That's like Dropbox for cash. Right? Yes, and that's what they meant to do. So apart from that, how other, how, which other way could you do it? People have lost no, their lives. No, of course, of course, that is super useful. Yes, that is super useful mm -hmm. and uh, uh, very important. Like uh, keeping aside the fact that uh, you might. Uh, escaping from uh, a country yeah. because you are uh, under uh, 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 you, are, you are being haunted by your government or because um, the, your country does not work your, your, your government has messed up financially and they're trying to stop in the job from taking their money out of the country and, talk, and stuff like that and you have the feed there are also very simple things like you want to travel light right and yes either, and you don't want to oh yes yes to... yes great great so that you know that's what? one point yeah so one another point and stuff like that yes so, Mm -hmm. and all these values yes. that are possible uh -huh. because of, uh, uh, with this. Yeah. But I'm going back to the cost of the value, the mm -hmm. cost of all of this. The cost of all of this is just is still, for example, governments created by human beings, yeah. um, uh, currencies created by human beings, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Others created by human beings. So I'm looking back at the value created by Bitcoin is trying to escape from the prisons 
that we created for ourselves in the name of institutions and this is just supposed to be yeah i see but when you put it like that it it almost let me use the word again it almost escapes from the original definitions because remember we started with the definition of money you look at the ideals of money and the, the definitions of economics and the uh, current implementations the, it's like we're just joking so it's the same thing you're saying but i just want to paint the picture so now this implements that definition almost uh, the appro- how approximate or how much it converges to that definition is so high that that is the value that you have and from there you can calculate the opportunity cost and all of those things so that's why i was saying that for you to really see it, you can look at the features you see what i mean yes. yeah yes yeah of, again, I, I look at the features very well and i agree with those features yeah and uh, to me the, the features of, of cryptocurrency celebrates mm-hmm. the right of an individual as a global citizen mm-hmm. right yeah. um however undermines the institutions that have been created in the past and with which we still live in, right? Yeah. Um, um, uh, which is constrained. Again, like I, like oh, I said, let me put a counter for you. Yeah. Countries, uh, mm-hmm. And the countries have currencies. Yeah. And um, as individuals, we suffer yeah. because of this of this uh, 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 constraints created yeah. by institutions. Yes, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. we are now using these technologies. Mm-hmm. The values of these technologies frees us from the constraints created yes. by these things we human beings have created yes okay then another point is that if you look at the current banking systems they are really old created on um, um, legacy systems uh, is it swift and the rest if you as a business person when you transfer money to let's say cameroon to america therefore big business it used to take like two weeks right the bank to bank when you do bank to bank you use days i remember i i had sent i think i sent five thousand dollars to rwanda it was a big problem just like it's small money you send the they say you have reached a limit so and then they say okay they would give you back in three business days i almost had to i created a whole twitter storm with a, a how do you call it well remit because i was like I want to do business, I send money, you take my money, you don't say anything, then you say it has a limit, but for you to give me back is in three days. So mm-hmm. I am missing on the opportunity and mm-hmm. you are, in, there's so many inconvenient, I, I, I was stressing to sue them. So they had to actually like uh, 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 make it go through faster. So, but with this network, uh, the heartbeat is 10 minutes. So, and, 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 and mind you, these things that I say, they sound very simple because that's the power of Bitcoin is in the simplicity that you really see is sophistication. So since it's 10 minutes and mm-hmm. the, the system handles those people transfer then $1 billion through the network. It just takes it like 10 minutes. You have it. So now imagine payroll. At the end of the day, let's say you have a global community, let's say like the World Bank, when I was working at the World Bank, they have to pay people across the world. How much do you think they, they, they spend to run that payroll? Secondly, how much time does it take for the money to, to reach their destinations? You see, it will take days. So they will probably need to pay on this, on, on, uh, maybe on the first, they will probably need to pay everyone on the first of the month in order for them to get paid on the 15th. You see what I mean? So, so yeah. they start running, but with Bitcoin, once and, and again, another the way you really see the value is that there is this guy, Andreas and, uh, Antronopoulos, is uh, like the Bitcoin messiah. He says, I think of Bitcoin as the internet of money or programmable money. Yes. So, so you had yes. explained the internet uh, of value, although you didn't pin it to money, but you were really really explain the internet of money where people can have this value that they can use to acquire other things because they have empowered themselves to create value but value is valuable as much as it, it gives you optionality so you're explaining that you wanted people to have options to use the value they have created exactly so now exactly. imagine yeah. that on top of that value exactly. yeah the, the, the thing is, the thing is, I have your uh, timer here, so I will hit you up when it's time. So, so, so relax and continue. Yeah, okay. 
the moment, no, I'm saying, the moment um, uh, you you give people that opportunity yeah. to be able to discover how much value they have created and use yeah. it to do one thing or another, yes. you have created a city, yeah. a free economy, because yes. you have now motivated people to create different forms of values. Exactly. I'll just something like a Shopify app store, right? Yeah. Um, it's still, it's still too. Uh, 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 number of parallel lines are still very few, right? Yeah. But you have the developer uh, 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 community developing mm-hmm. Shopify apps, and then you have the uh, 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 market market marketers or marketplace owners, mm-hmm. right? Uh, or store owners, yeah, who build, are building applications. Yeah. Now I can um, each store owner can buy apps yeah. from. Uh, developers to extend, ex- extend, yeah, uh, just like uh, just like on Amazon and uh, Google, even Google, you can buy on Google, WordPress. yes, WordPress, exactly, like themes and things. Okay. Yeah, I get it, yeah, mm-hmm. yes, okay. Now, um, so these are very tangible value creators, right? Yes, right. yes, exactly, mm-hmm. like apps, yeah. like WordPress, thing, right? Yeah. They are very tangible. And the people who are consuming this value are consuming it in the form of cash. Yes. Right. Yeah. And because, uh, like I'm paying cash in order mm. to get your 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 your, your app yes. and your your stuff. Yes. Now, um, the value created in platforms like Twitter and like um, uh, uh, let's say Sp- uh, Spotify for free users is not that uh, 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 visible. But we all know that they are monetizing with adverts, yeah. right? And their value so, is it can also there's also like a network effect and effects where yeah. it could even cost stock to go down. It could cost wars. Yeah. That's the kind of value that is created and manipulated on this platform. Now look at look at Facebook. Facebook has consistently refused mm-hmm. to make people pay for access. Because they know that they make more money from advertisers than yeah. they make money from uh, premium members yeah. to access, right? Yeah, so right. it tells us that there is a lot more value created mm-hmm. when people uh, are you use some of these platforms for free. And that's economies now, of scale. Good. Now the the, the, the the my problem here is that why don't we um, uh, 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 discover new economies, mm. new ways to measure the value created by the participants in this community. That's all uh, cryptocurrency solve that, Paul, and we will probably need to continue in, in a, yeah, yeah. Who has solved this cryptocurrency? Okay, yes, Reddit. So Reddit is actually working on a coin. They, I think, they're still testing it, right? Ready to see working on a coin and and there are other crypto networks. Um, let me look at the time. You have like eight minutes. I can get a bit into it. So Ready is actually working on a coin where its karma system can actually be captured as cryptocurrencies. The Brave browser has coins on it, like the BAT coin and there are other coins that uh, they block advertisements by default, and then you mm-hmm. can accept to get them, but you are paid. Right, so that's another system where uh, your participation is a two-way street. I can consent uh, because what the thing about the crypto networks, the core of it is, is that it's built on consensus. You mm-hmm. see what I mean? Okay, so now that is like some real. So you can check check it out after this. Uh, Ready this actual work. I think they are the testing phase where they will transform that system and it will be some value that you can use outside of Reddit. You see, and that's the beauty of cryptocurrencies because um, the consensus is recursive. It's not just at the level of the network itself. It's at the level of the subsets of the network. So we can decide that, okay, we'll do this with that or we'll do yeah. that with this. Okay, so now there is another, the, the, in terms of opportunity costs, you had talked about the amount of electricity that Bitcoin consumes to maintain its consensus that's the argument that a lot of people use against bitcoin and to create propaganda and yeah i i, I, I don't have problem with electricity used mm-hmm. whether it's much or not mm-hmm. i'm i just i just look at it like i said like you said yeah. with respect to 
the, opp the opportunity cost of the electricity vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the fact that all the all the problems created yeah. that um, that Bitcoin yeah. is solving all this electricity are just problems we created for ourselves with government. Yeah, yeah, government. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I see, I see. But but um, then uh, but then there's something I, 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 else. I keep looking at it in this way. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the thought is not like uh, clear in my head, yeah. but what I'm looking at is if we cannot trust our government and the financial system that they have created and we from, are now from experience to bypass them, right? Mm -hmm. The individuals who live in this government cannot trust the government um, in policy making and implementation and in distributing the value that each person has created in um, the uh, uh, um, uh, economy, all potential options, then is the solution bypassing government to live a life without, um, to live lives, uh -huh. right? Because growth in these systems means that um, growth in, this crypto, in, the, in the crypto world is um, a representation of the number of people who are bypassing um, 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 uh, 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 gov government systems, right? Not and exactly, one, actually. 100% success means mm -hmm. that the, everybody has successfully... No, um, no, no uh, not exactly. Not exactly, right? And let okay. me touch briefly on that, and then I'll tell you the proof of stake, and we can conclude. So, uh, the thing is, it's a tool, right? But it's very, it's really, it gives you, that's why I said, the, the way it converges to the ideas of money and even things like democracy is very accurate. So, so um, when people attack Bitcoin nowadays, they use this, the, 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 uh, 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 what would I use? literature about uh, electricity. And then the other thing is the thing is against the government. It's not because the blockchain is, is right there. The ledger is right there. I see it as it gives, it creates more opportunities like for forensic accounting and things like that. Because if I have my public key and the rest, um, next time I, I will show you like a block explorer that shows you all the transactions that are gone. I remember one time, and, and there's a beauty of this thing. I remember one time I'd sent like $12,000 on one of these cryptocurrency networks. I could go and track it. I went to the Block Explorer, put my public key there. I saw the, the amount. It was in Tezos. I saw the amount there, and you see the people that were validated. It says, okay, when it needed 32 validators for it to really get into my account. So I was then looking at it, right? So if the government is investigating me, they have seen things, they don't know where I'm coming from, they can get a warrant from a judge and then they can ask me, I'll give them my public key and then they can check, right? If it takes them two hours or eight hours and they're paying their engineers $100 an hour, that's employment that has been created. So, 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 so you see how when we look at the system for what it really is, you see the opportunities that it brings both for governments to use and for everyone to use, but is that plain? And then you now see that not just is it converging towards the ideas of money, but of democracy in the sense that if the government operates as it's supposed to operate, there will be a lot of transparency. So so with that, I can go to the other one, which is, uh, uh, let me look at the time. Okay, so two minutes. So it's um, proof of stake. So they say that, uh, uh, electricity is expensive and there are also many, many other reasons for that because um, since... Expensive to me. Huh? Sorry? Expensive to me. Uh, to the people that are using it. Like, because... because it, yeah, but, but you get the point. Like, they... So, they, they say that, okay, yes, electricity, let's say they say, yes, electricity is bad to the environment. It does if we don't use solar. That's if we don't use solar in future to power those networks, right? But they say, okay, let's do... One of the reasons for the electricity was to prevent civil attacks, a system where some, um, like you and I in the Jangi house or half of the point, more than half, 51%, can decide that let's change the record. 
right? So mm-hmm. the electricity that will expand the change the record, it will be so hard for them to get it. So so that's w- what electricity does there. So there is another system called proof of stake. So so Bitcoin has what they call proof of work. You see, so proof of stake. Now what it says is that those that are participating in the network, they should come and put something that is at stake that they tend to lose if they misbehave because the electricity that is expended in the network is to prevent bad behavior so that in order for me to cheat, I will lose the electricity or thousands of dollars. You see what I mean? So the guys say, okay, let's put some other thing. So like a bond that if I misbehave, I try to do double spending and the rest, they will get that money. So mm-hmm. it's now in Bitcoin where you open your branch for validating transactions. On this one, you open a branch by putting some security deposit just to help people do when they want to open banks, right? Mm-hmm. So for Tezos in particular, that's one of my favorite blockchains. It's uh, a 8,000, they call it a roll. 8,000 Tezos for one roll. That's like $25,000 now. So when you put one roll, you are able to validate transactions. So you can participate on the network mm-hmm. and, and then validate transactions. When you sign the transactions, the network will will uh, reward you with systems. But now you had mentioned some value that is created and distributed. And at the start of this, I told you about the digital commonwealth. Some of these um, proof of stake systems really capture that in the sense that for Tezos, everybody who owns at least one Tezos gets a reward for that Tezos. So not just the miners like in Bitcoin, but if I am not able to mine or bake Tezos, as they call it, that's the technical word, I can delegate my Tezos to somebody else. So he will use my Tezos and add to his bond that he will give, right? And then the system will reward him and then he will reward me. So everybody that has Tezos gains from the value that they're adding to the network. So you see how those here, all the worries we're having about this is already solved by just fundamentally participating in this network. And with it, with it, with that, you don't only have a voice in terms of money, but you can now decide on the protocol, just like how you have, it's an open source project. So they say for you to be able to talk, you should have a stake in it. So, mm-hmm. so you either have a stake through delegation or you actually give a bond and start validating transactions. And then when they start voting for new protocols, the how Facebook can say, okay, let's change the design here. Let's put more ads. Those that own stakes in the system, they decide via systems that are also captured on the blockchain. So, and Tezos is built on a, an OCaml. They use OCaml in school to build languages. It's really, really smart. It's an AI language. Right. So Tezos is the state of the Tezos protocol is itself tokenized on the Tezos blockchain. So when people vote that, okay, we want to change the system this way, they would code that new change, put on the blockchain. Then they will issue some transactions with their votes. The system will take the votes and know that, okay, this is the new change they want. And then the system will adjust itself to implement that new change. And that's how you have like version one and two or version three. So, so the, these things, Paul, if you get into it, is really beautiful and it shows a lot of things that um, you as an entrepreneur and me, we can get. And especially someone like you that thinks deep into these questions. I hope that I was able or we're able to uncover the solutions to some of these things, at least abstractly, and we can get into the details later. I think that we'll have more conversations on this yeah. so that uh, we, can explore, we can look more into it. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think we, we we've come to the end for thanks thanks for your time. Thanks for all these questions. You got me thinking, got my brain kicking. And uh yeah, and you, you made it I, I didn't just have to think about these things um theoretically, but to see its application in the real world and how the value goes out and ripple effects in a good way. And I hope that I was also able to communicate back what is um, what is true about the system. Yes, so thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, anytime you want to come on, let me know and we can have these conversations again. Yeah. All right, Paul. Bye. See ya.